Hi, my name is T. I'm a chef and restaurant owner. I'm here today to show you how to use a knife. So when I grip the knife, it's a firm grip and the, I guess my pointer finger, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on it, but it's still, there's still movement. So you can still rock your knife. A nice grip with a bit of flex so you can adjust as you're going. Have the onion and then just cut it straight in half. With the onion end, I always like to go in on an angle at the end, so then you're cutting off your roots, so nothing sticks later on. And for me, I always like to follow the curvature of the vegetable. I just use the top of my knife, cut and pull back. So you have all your pieces, and I just my other hand, my non-knife hand, I just push everything down and then I just turn everything. I go the other way. And I guess when I teach my chefs inside the kitchen, I always, always say to them, go slow and then you can always pick up the pace. When you get to here, you can, you can choose to continue or you can push it on, on its side. And that way you can just kind of continue it as well. Uh, if you notice how I'm standing, I'm actually just standing straight. I'm not looking down. I'm not, my knife is not, I'm not standing like this because you can't see. But if you're standing straight, your body's parallel and you just, it's just one motion. The most important thing about cutting onions is that you should have a sharp knife. It doesn't bruise the onion and the juices squirt in your eye and make you cry. I'm using a Japanese knife today, so there, there, there isn't much of a, a curve. I'm kind of just slicing. Uh, but if you have a knife that is more of a, uh, maybe more of a curve, you can use it, you can actually just rock. We get, get a knife. Use the base part of your knife. Not the top, because if that flicks up, you're probably likely to uh, hurt yourself. The skin will just come apart quite quickly. Garlic's already small. You can just you can just run your knife through it, and then you can just push it together. You can turn thing, turn it around, and you can just go the other way. So I probably can use that inside a wok. It's not too fine, but if you you know if you want something finer, you can just use the tip of your knife, and you can just. You can scrape. I'm just keeping the tip of my knife in the same spot and just following the garlic. This is probably good for garlic bread. It's uh, always good to have your herbs dry. That way you're just gonna get a cleaner, cleaner cut. You see some videos where everyone's just like mincing up the herbs. I find it just bruises your your herbs and it doesn't last long and everything goes mushy. You know, sh your herbs should be nice and crisp still. So I'll show you the fine chop first. And this is probably a technique you can use to the rolling technique. And I'm just, if you notice, I'm just using the tip. You just slide your hand a little bit more forward. That way it's better control. So if you notice, nothing, it's not green, it's sticking to the board. So all your flavor is still in the herb. So same thing again, I just kind of turn it the other way. And you notice everything is just one cut. So then you've got your herbs. If you're using everything in your recipe, you can just kind of bunch everything together. And it just depends, if you want a rough, rough chop, you can just, if you notice my uh, finger is just it's just gu guiding the knife. And if you notice, I'm not pushing my herbs towards the knife. I'm actually just moving everything from right to left. So here I've got some celery. So this time I'm probably using a little bit more of the knife than just the top part. And then if you want to change the shape, I always find that you just change the angle of what you're trying to cut. So 
you can slice. I try to get all my vegetables the same size and then that way it kind of all cooks at the same time. So if I was to use the, the drawback method, so if I want everything that size, I kind of just cut my first piece and that becomes my, my guide. So then I can just go, you're just pulling back and you're just, you're just twisting your, I guess your vegetable. So the reason why I use this, this method here in particular is because I'm using a wok, I'm stir frying. I don't want the spring onion to break down too much. Julianning is when you cutting something down to like fine sticks and fine threads. So just say, you've got your little ginger. Use a spoon, kind of just scrape it. So I find that with a, a pillar, it's just hard to get inside all the little grooves and stuff. And if you notice with ginger, that there is grain. It's always good to cut against the grain. If you cut it thin the first go, then when you come back and slice, it's already at that thickness you want. And then you can just use the tip of your knife. Alternatives to using a knife, I find that at home it's always it's always good to have a modern pestle. And this way you can put garlic, onion, you know, chili in here without even using a knife and it does grind it down and crush it. I always find this probably something really good to have at home or even in the kitchen, a microplane. Um, it, you can grate garlic, uh, get zest of uh, citrus without using your knife and it minces things quite fast. Also, another great alternative is a uh, mandolin. It's pr pretty good to cut uh, onions and shallots, stuff like that, and you can cut things quite uh, thin. And um, with mandolins, they also come with different attachments, so you can julienne, baton as well, if you don't have a knife. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you can use some of the skills today to test out some of the recipes on ABC.